Welcome to the WWE Podcast, your number one source for the latest in WWE news and straightforward analysis. Are you ready to get this thing going? Give me a hell yeah! I said give me a hell yeah! Then let's get this show started right now. All right, well, this is a very special episode of the WWE Podcast, and ironically, it's about AEW and not WWE, but uh, given the news that's floating around, the rumors that are floating around, we can't not do an episode, particularly when we have a resident uh, conspiracy theorist on the WWE Podcast team in Mary Grader. So, Mary, there's Daniel Bryan, there's CM Punk, potentially in AEW. Maybe they've already signed. What the hell is going on? <laughs> well, first, thanks for having me as your official uh, conspiracy theorist in in the house and your CM Punk, um, I guess, expert. I don't know. I don't want to put that monkey on me. But, uh, yeah, man, yesterday was a crazy day, and I just felt that this needed to be a show. I was going to try to get on next week for the Raw review. We were going to do a Money in the Bank thing, but our schedules did not coexist. And now we are here because this is way too big for us not to do a special on so i don't know what's going on man it feels like the tide is going to turn we didn't really discuss this before we got on because we kind of know we wanted to do this naturally but we did say yeah every three months you know the rumor comes up that cm punk's coming back where is he going he's talking to you know he does an interview and he and he says something and you know punk is very smart and he does things for reasons just to get people talking But I got to say, and I hope you agree with me, this seems like the most concrete evidence or rumor in the last seven years since Punk has left professional wrestling that is going around just because AEW exists. Would you agree? Disagree? Yeah, Yeah, this this is by far the most. Yeah, solid, concrete, whatever analogy you want to use, evidence that CM Punk could be returning to wrestling. And for those WWE fans, it's not the most encouraging. It doesn't seem like WWE, if this is true, is his destination and AEW could be. And boy, would that counter all of the returns that WWE has had over the last week with crowds back. And, uh, of course, Goldberg and don't want to get started there, but some people view it as a big return. And uh, we've got Finn Balor coming back up and, uh, you know, John Cena, of course. But uh, this could counter all of the publicity that WWE has had over the last week and really just steal it, steal the spotlight away. So, Mary, just for people that aren't privy to what the hell is going on, let's take let's take CM Punk first, because him being your favorite, give our audience kind of a background. What is going on that makes you believe this could be real? Um, Well, I mean. They, you know, everybody has an opinion about CM Punk, right? And, like, when he walked out seven years ago, basically professional wrestling turned their back on him because they said he was a sore loser and he took his ball home and went home and all that stuff that was going on. And, like, you know, the whole time I've always been 100% behind his decision. I mean, we talk about it every time we talk. I'm sure your other co-hosts, our other co-hosts talk about it. WWE has this structure and this problem with creative and booking and how they manage their characters and how they will get, you know, golden top level professional talent and then just somehow piss the bed on every single one of them. They'll be over in NXT and then they get to the main roster. You know, Finn Balor is a prime example. He's coming back to the roster. I freaked out and I was like, first thing I said was don't F it up. Because he effed it up the last time. You know, he went back to NXT. He got back over as big as he was. So this is a consistent thing. And there was a reason why you could say he's selfish. You could say he's self-centered. He's never, ever, ever denied who he is. That's the great thing. And that's why people love CM Punk is because he's real. He's legit. That is who he is. He doesn't apologize to anybody. But he's allowed to do it because he can back it up. He has the talent. He has the, the background. And I think it's the most concrete and and li- likely situation that's going to happen because we've been saying it for months, you know, during this pandemic, nothing big was going to no big return. It doesn't matter if it was punk or like AJ Lee or anybody who's like a free agent, 
you know, market right now was going to come back until the fans came back. And we see what's going on with WWE right now. They brought back John Cena, and that was one of the big, po- biggest pops I've ever heard. And for him, it was gigantic. I mean, I've been watching Punk stuff for the last 24 hours, and him coming out in Boston, John Cena was getting booed out of the building, and that is his home state. So this AEW is such a factor because Punk has talked in the last six months about how if AEW was around when his contract expired in 2014, WWE might have reacted different because they wouldn't have wanted him going to AEW. And, you know, there's all this bad blood and all this crazy stuff. And AEW is now an actual competitor money wise, TV wise and everything for the WWE. And it's somewhere that Punk has not, you know conquered yet so why wouldn't he go there i just think that you know the ufc thing he did it he tried it unfortunately it didn't work out i think he was too old for it and that's not a knock to him i give him all the props in the world he had guts doing that because i wouldn't do that at his age but he still got stuff in the tank he's still in shape you know we've seen edge come back from 10 years and doing the best work of his life and it just He's a businessman at the end of the day, and he knows what's going to put butts in seats. He knows how he's going to get the most paid money. And his vengeance and his anger, because, again, he's a jerk. He's a self-proclaimed jerk. If he really wants to stick it to WWE for everything that he's that they've done to him, going to AEW is basically the best way to do it, wouldn't you say? There's no question. And now, if you ask CM Punk, he would probably say, "Yeah, that's water under the bridge." You know, I, yeah. I I got over it a long time ago. And while I do believe him, I still think that inside himself, he would feel a bit of retribution, no pun intended, for everything that happened, and kind of like a, a bit of a, a sly middle finger to WWE. Now, to to that end, I don't know if he has spoken with WWE at all, and if it's just uh, AEW. Now, let, let me give people a little bit of evidence here of what is going on, and uh, here are some sources that I was looking at, and credible ones at that. So this is from Deadspin.com, and Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful.com, which it, they have said is the most plugged-in guy in the business, started shaking the wrestling world down to its studs when he broke a story on Punk's ongoing talks with AEW. Sapp was... Uh, pointed out that nothing has been signed, no date confirmed or anything like that, but just, quote, serious talks had taken place and that some higher ups in WWE believe Punk could be headed to their competition. So that is that's interesting that um, WWE is is actually keeping tabs on this. As, as they watch, I mean, wouldn't wh- you? Yeah, <laughs> but, I mean, while they would, they would never admit it publicly. Sources, uh, the, the the good old anonymous quote sources, have been keeping tabs on on Punk, and it makes you wonder if this is true. If, and I believe it is, that he's in talks with AEW. That if that's true, and they believe he's close to a deal, do you think WWE would try to sweep in and add another zero to that payoff and try to take Punk away? I mean, I believe I believe that will happen. I believe, like, as much as WWE wants to back like they don't care and they're not concerned about AEW, I mean, they moved NXT from Wednesday to Tuesdays. I'm sorry, there was a reason for that, because AEW was doing better in demographics than NXT was, and it's not crapping on NXT. NXT is the best product that WWE puts out right now, hands down. Like, there's there's none of that. I mean, WWE is definitely going to try to not let this happen for multiple reasons, not even just because it's punk. I mean, we'll get to the Daniel Bryan rumors, Mm -hmm. which we, again, me, I'm not trying to discredit anybody on Twitter, but I've been saying this for over a year and a half. If one goes, the other is going. It doesn't matter what order it is in. Those guys are still friends. They have been, you know, on the indie, you know, Racket, I can't even think of the word right now because I'm so excited. They have been through everything since 2002. I watched their first match in ROH last night. These guys put indie wrestling basically on the map, and, you know, Punk was the first crossover star, and he made it possible for Daniel Bryan to reach the heights that he did. But, you know, not that Daniel Bryan ever needed him, but WWE never wanted to pay attention to him. You know what I mean? It's the same thing that happened with Punk. I mean, just watching Punk debut on the crappy ECW that WWE put out, the reboot, he was over then. He was huge. Like, it, it, it... 
WWE would be stupid to not offer him. But the thing is, and I was thinking about this really hard last night, would Punk consider it? Yes. But the it goes back to character development and creative. It would be a novelty that wore off in a month. I'm sure they would give him be like, you could do this and you could do that. And at some point they would change the narrative. And I don't think that I think Punk is very aware of that. You know, because he watches the product. He could say that he didn't for a while. As of late in the last two to three years, especially when he started doing backstage again, you know, I think he was paying close attention to it. And then you go over to AEW where it seems like these people have creative control. They're allowed to say whatever they want. You know, they try it out. And even if it doesn't work, then they scrap it and they move on. That's that's not the way WWE works. They will beat something into the ground, even if it's dead on arrival, because that's, that's what they have. Cause they never have any future plans. They never have long-term stuff. The, the closest thing they have right now is Roman Reigns. And I think that became on a whim because look for how long they refuse to turn Roman Reigns. And now it's just like, okay, they got it and it's working and it's the best thing they're putting out right now. But if, CM Punk shows up in AEW, you know, people are comparing it if him and Brian show up to the outsiders, you know, Nash and Hull. But I think it would be completely different because they were top guys in WWE. They would actually be the top guys in the AEW. They would be the veterans. They would be the they would they would be bigger than Jericho. They would be bigger than Kenny Omega. I'm sorry, and every indie guy can get at me. The star power that they have and the the love they have for their characters and what they have done professionally, technically in the ring, they would actually for once finally be the top guy. They wouldn't be CM Punk being the champion and still doing second card to John Cena in a match against Sean Laurinaitis. It would be guaranteed that they would be the focal point because they wouldn't be able to deny it. It wouldn't be something like WWE does where they denied how over Daniel Bryan was and how over CM Punk was taking away titles from him when he was like a heel and still getting the crowd reaction that everybody wanted. They still stripped him of all this stuff because people didn't get it. They didn't like his look. He didn't. They. they he couldn't be a face of the company. Neither of them, which they have proven they have carried the company. CM Punk carried that company during that whole time he was there in, you know, the early, the late 2000s, early 2010s. As a heel, he was the most interesting thing that that company had going, and it showed. So I think that WWE, of course, is going to try. And I, could, I think they could throw a lot of money at him. But I think at this point, now that Punk has an option to go somewhere else and conquer another, you know, federation and show why he says he's the best in the world and why he opens so many doors for all the wrestlers that you see today on the main roster of WWE, it's not going to be enough. I don't think it's about the money at this point. Do you? I think that's a part of it. Anybody that tells. It's a part, yeah, but yeah. I don't think it's an end game. No, no. I, now, again, it's all about the two C's, as Jim Ross says, creative and cash. It's always creative and cash, and that's that's it. That's all that wrestling and, and wrestlers are concerned about, and I, understandably. So part of it is cash, and Punk would be silly not to care about the money. He does. Uh, but the creative, to me, and, and the culture that WWE has may not be attractive to CM Punk right now, given the toxicity and the rumor, you know, not even the rumors, the confirmations from people leaving the company about what it's like backstage, that kind of crap that I'm sure he doesn't want to get reinvolved in and, you know, backtrack to where he was. I think that right now he wants to do what he wants. The creative is much more liberal in AEW than it is in WWE with everything being so micromanaged. And it's interesting that CM Punk is still one of the most popular names in wrestling and he hasn't even wrestled in seven years. It's, it's, I mean, that, that's, that's all you need to know about the, the power and the, uh, the, the star power of CM Punk. And if you bring CM Punk to AEW, if AEW ultimately is the winner here, if there is indeed some kind of auction going on back uh, behind the scenes for Punk, then this is not just a another big signing, right? Like, this isn't a Dean Ambrose. No disrespect to Dean Ambrose. This isn't a big show. This isn't Jim Ross. This is, like, big names. Certainly those those guys are, and, and absolutely respect them. But CM Punk is a seismic shift. CM Punk is a needle mover. He isn't just another big guy. He would, I believe, revive the wrestling industry. Now, 
I, I, I don't mean to say it's going to go back to Monday Night War era uh, ratings, but what I mean is I think that, that he would probably attract another 500,000 to a million viewers back to the product that have otherwise moved on, given especially social media. People would lose their minds. The question, though, becomes, say he signs with AEW. How many matches is he going to have, though? Like, what is his term going to be like? Is it just a couple of matches and move on? I couldn't imagine him working a full-time schedule. I mean, I agree with that, too. Um, Like I said, if he went back to WWE, and I said this to you the other day when we were texting, I feel like it would have to be like a Brock Lesnar contract. Like, Ironclad guaranteed, like, a million dollars in appearance, does what he wants, like, you know, all that stuff. The difference is, is that, you know, and as much as I love Brock Lesnar and he, he is a crossover star, he puts eyes on the product. CM Punk is way more talented than him on the mic. Like, you know, the, the guy is just a golden goose. Like everything that comes out of his mouth when he speaks and Rhea Ripley quoted this about her, him being such an influence on her and wanting to be at that level. When he speaks, everybody shuts up. It's silent. Nobody ignores what CM Punk says, no matter what the context, whatever it is. When he talks, people listen. And that is a rarity in wrestling. Um, we do have his Stone Colds and Rocks, and he is up there. And I don't care what anybody says. I mean, Paul Heyman's, he is that guy. And his mind and knowing the product and, and just knowing what works and his ability to make and break people, I just – I don't know what his schedule would be. I mean, he's 42. He's going to be 43 in October. I mean, Edge is, you know, on a a regular schedule, but I I don't, I don't know that what would be the basis for that. I'm sure he doesn't want to do that much work, but it depends on how it goes. You know, he could walk in there and just being like, I'm just going to do a couple of appearances or like challenge whoever is the big guy, blah, 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 blah. And then he could enjoy it so much that he might go back full time. I don't know. That is, you know, that is a big big question but what i do know is that since aj styles left tna and his contract ex- you know expired and he showed up in wwe in 2013 or it was actually yeah 2013 14 i think it was the same rumble that punk left right mm-hmm. yep. maybe um he cm punk is the biggest free agent on the market and he has been for the last seven years and nobody could touch him like aj had that and i think aj really was the biggest free agent at that time Punk, it it eclipses that. So I don't know. I don't know what he's going to do. But what I, like you said, I know it's about money and it always is. He is a businessman and anybody, you know, who who shafts him or, or, you know, gives him crap about him wanting money, like you're an idiot. Any, Any person alive wants that. Like, you know, hell, I'm working a job right now that I'm not crazy about, but I need money. So like you do what you got to do for money. And he's comfortable. I'm sure he's got his contracts. He's doing commentating. He's doing stuff for Marvel, all that stuff. But at the end of the day, he's a lifer, you know, and he might, he, he was, he had a bad taste in his mouth when he left WWE and rightfully so WWE destroyed his passion for it, but it's still in him. And he's been open about it more in the last two years than he has, you know, it used to be like, Nope, Nope, I'm never going back. I read when the settlement happened with WWE, the lawsuit that it was under the terms that he would never wrestle for WWE again. I don't know if that's him saying it or if that was the actual agreement that they came to when they settled the lawsuit. But in the last two years, He's been more open about it. You know, he said, like, you know, it's got to be right. It's got to make sense. Obviously, it's got to be a buttload of money. And and he deserves it because that guy walking out, whatever stage it comes on. Honestly, I think it would be a bigger pop in AEW than it wouldn't be in WWE. Not that it wouldn't be a massive pop in WWE, but AEW, that that is shades of people showing up in WCW because the WWE has not had a solid competitor for the last two years, and I'm not saying AEW might beat them. I'm not saying that they could reach their levels. They could. There was some random girl on Twitter yesterday saying that if CM Punk showed up in AEW, WWE shut down. That's not going to happen, okay? that the, You're not going to kill a federation like that. This isn't the mid-'90s where wrestling was like kind of just going through this weird – you know, restructure, new beginnings, rebirth, what you want to say it, they won't shut WWE down. You know, WWE is a global conglomerate. They are the biggest in the business, but is it going to scare Vince? Is it going to, is it going to maybe light a fire under their butts to do something different? 
hell yeah. And it's going to be competition because you need faces like that. Chris Jericho is a living legend. I love him. He still recreates himself and whatever. But at the same time, he is he it, it's just it's I, I'm sorry. It's not the same level as CM Punk. It's just not him showing up in AEW is going to flip the wrestling world on its head. Anybody that believes that this is going to shut down WWE, I mean, I'm sorry, you just don't know wrestling. Like you, you yeah. just like we just put over CM Punk like a million bucks the last 20 minutes. As big as he is, I don't care who you are. They could sign Stone Cold, The Rock, and Undertaker to a triple threat main event, and it's, I mean, like it's not gonna happen. Like I, I, I totally agree. I mean, that's just, I'm sorry, that's asinine. That's silly. It's, it's, it's absolutely, silly. it's ridiculous. It's, it's ridiculous. absolutely ridiculous. Uh, so that said, uh, beyond that, just ridiculousness, I'm not, uh, whoever that person is, like, I'm not trying to disrespect them, but yeah. come on, like, let's, let's get real. Um, and that, you know, that being said though, CM Punk, wherever he lands, which tends to seem, it seems to be AEW and AEW uh, president, Tony Khan did tease quote, big surprises coming soon on a recent episode of Busted Open Radio, our, our beloved Busted Open. But he <laughs> did indeed uh, say that. So uh, now, again, that, that could mean a multitude of things. Big surprises is a very subjective term. What's yes. big to him may not be big to what you and I are thinking about. But mm-hmm. you know, things do line up here. And, and Punk knows that he doesn't have a whole lot of days ahead of him if he wants to get back into wrestling for at least a year, two years for a part-time schedule. I don't expect him, no matter where he goes, to actually have a full time schedule that'd be foolish so to me what if uh, he punk, becomes yeah. champ though yeah well then i mean we've seen brock lesnar become champ and kind of disappear for months on but end right brock I mean, like... is a different <laughs> i mean that's what i was saying about brock it's no disrespect to brock but brock is a different animal like you know the rumor has always been that he doesn't really care about wrestling he is motivated by a paycheck and he wants to be that cm punk cares about wrestling you know again like i said at the end of the day he is a lifer and him to just you know ride off into the wind or into the you know the dusk and the sunset and just be like oh i'm done and that's it i i think that even him and he knows himself the best is you know a bunch of crap he can't it's in his blood and if you watch him throughout his career you could see it was in his blood he was something different and that is why he got signed to wwe they could be like you know they they treated him terribly when he first came over because again people don't get it but vince doesn't get things that it's not 30 years ago to way that life evolves but you know again he carried that company for a long time he was out selling john cena merchandise the kids were cheering him when he first debuted just like they were doing aj styles like everybody said that about aj styles too again i think it's a different level these three people that i'm talking about are completely different levels but I just, you know, he's going to get the title at some point if he does sign AEW and, you know, he's a fighting champ. He is the longest modern running, you know, even though Brock beat it. But you can't count Brock because you're right. He was a part timer. He was an old school 70s wrestler who wrestled every three months. Punk was in and out every day. That 434 still stands in my book. Dumb. And I just I don't know, man. This is I, I think he's got a lot of stuff left in the tank. I mean, he's still in shape. You know, he was training for UFC at one point. It's not like he was just like, oh, OK, I'm going to eat a whole bunch of potato chips and sit on the couch now and not doing that. The guy is an athlete. He takes care of his body and he's been rested for seven years. Like everybody forgets that stuff like Edge almost, re- you know, almost was done, was done for a career ending injury to his neck and his back. That guy rested for 10 years and came back, and he is doing amazing things right now. Amazing things. Nobody can deny it. I can't deny it. The pop he's getting is crazy. And, you know, he got 10 years of his career route to him. I still stand by the fact that if Stone Cold ever had came back, and he did have that one match with CM Punk that he wanted at one point, he would have been fine. You know why? Because he was sitting on, you know, he was resting for eight years. The body heals. It's just the in and out of the business. Somebody somebody on Twitter again yesterday said lingering issues, a, a, a laundry list of injuries for CM Punk. What what injuries? He got his knee scoped once. He, he had a bad elbow. He, he had a lump on his back that nobody wanted to look at. He, he never had like some severe injury. I mean, other than his early days in the independence where he cracked his skull. But that's over 20 years ago. And he was wrestling a long time after that. You know, so. 
I just, I, I, the, the levels that this could reach, I mean, I'm trying to figure out how to set up a recording device for when I'm watching wrestling now. <laughs> you should have, just hire, hire a camera crew the next like few weeks just to follow <laughs> you around, <laughs> you know, that way you can't, you don't miss it. Uh, because I, I really would love to see how, how you react to that. Now, again, this is not set in stone. Of course, we could be let it's down not. as we've been let down over the last seven years of rumors floating around. But uh, as we just said at the beginning of the show, this is by far the most convincing evidence and convincing case to be made for punk to return again he's not getting any younger and i think if he signs with aew and i I believe if he was going to choose either one and all was even the money was even that he probably would go with aew uh you know maybe eventually head back to dead WWE. he does have kind of an open-ended yeah uh you know he never got closure in wwe he never got closure as a wrestler ever so i feel like as much as he may say i don't know i'm done with wrestling everything cannot be perfect i still believe that he feels inside that he never got the closure that he wanted and he can say he's over it and he's, he is over it i think but i do believe that he wants that closure as a performer i, I don't as a human being i think we do you know I, I feel what he's kind of feeling but um i think that if he signs with aew it's going to be between wwe and aew kind of a, a battle of big returns because the rock and i'm not trying to change subjects going into the rock but the rock is tentatively scheduled to come back at the end of the year towards survivor series to challenge rowan reigns for the wwe championship at wrestlemania you have brock lesnar looming out there if he's not sitting on his farm growing his ponytail out you, you <laughs> have i mean you, you have a lot of massive names that are still yet to come back and so they could counter punch each other over the next few months and leading into the fall which really when you look at it like the, the winners here are wrestling fans like yes. th- there's we are the winners here because the fans coming back has really reignited all of this and looking at wwe and aew like i said it's going to be punch for punch of who can have the bigger return yeah, and, and that's that's to your point, too. The fans coming back has changed the game, right? Because both federations, I mean, AEW is still re- relatively new, but they have a lot of, you know, talent that is known. Cody Rhodes, I could, you know, I was watching last night, Sting's there, and Tully Blanchard. And it's so refreshing to see these guys in a role where they're managing and they're not being, you know, you know, horsed out there for a ratings pop or in a match that they don't deserve, <laughs> Goldberg, and all that stuff, you know what I mean? Like, it's it, they they have a good formula that they are the alternative to WWE's scripted vanilla formula that they always resort back to. And the fans have have brought it back. Now, you know, there are little things as being the conspiracy theorist that I am that I've seen. Like, why do you guys think that Samoa Joe got signed so quick, so back to NXT and Triple H was like, absolutely not. I mean, I don't know. Again, we still need to get into Daniel Bryan, but I think that was indicative of this because I had said to you a couple months ago when Joe was released, that was the biggest release that WWE did that I was like, what are you doing? You know, Joe is a veteran. He is an indie loved person. He is amazing on the mic. His history with CM Punk alone, them putting ROH on the map and all this stuff. If if Joe showed up in AEW, it would have been a huge shame. But as I have always said, is that if Punk goes one place, I think Daniel Bryan is right after him. Or if Daniel Bryan goes one place, I think Punk is one after him. So I think that them getting Joe back was like, oh, crap. If all three of these guys show up in AEW, we're going to have some problems. Yep. Because the three of them could form a stable of their own and just be like, we're the ROH. Like, you know, screw what was going on in NXT with O'Reilly and Fish and and Strong, like, no, we're the guys. We're the guys. We're the guys why everybody is where they are right now. So there are little things that are happening that I think WWE is like, all right, we need big returns. We got Cena. Brock might come back. You know, we, we put Joe. Joe finally all mysteriously is cleared now. There have been, you know, spoilers on the Internet last night that he is going to be at the next NXT TakeOver Wrestling. So little things like this. And that's why, you know, not to be a mark or whatever, you know, when you know, like, you, you, you're you watching things. It was the same thing the last time we talked about is the WWE being sold. You know, there's little things that you catch. And I think that Joe is a, a little part of this. And, I mean, I think he was underused on the main roster. I think he was great in NXT. But are they going to revive it? You know, so I think that's a little part of this CM Punk thing. But the fans coming back. 
I said that there would be no big returns until the fans come back. And Punk, as a businessman, knows that wrestling has been out for a year and a half. And he thought the Thunderdome was great, but it was terrible without fans. He thought everything was terrible without fans. He was open about this. He knew that if he was going to come back, the time is now. You know, we're we're hungry for wrestling. We want to be involved. And the best thing about Punk, he's one of those guys that involves the crowd sincerely. He listens to them. He is the voice of the voiceless. You know, everything about his moniker is true. So little things like that. The fans coming back has, I think, revitalized wrestling industry a little bit because we are a major part of it. If it wasn't for us, nobody would be popular, you know. And I think Punk's very aware of that. And he's like, all right, like you said, I'm not getting any younger. It's been seven years. I'm kind of over the burn that I got, you know, and I'm not fighting in UFC. And this is my home and this is my blood. And I need to go back and and flip the industry on its head. And I think he's always wanted to be that level of like an NWO invading another, uh, you know, federation. And at this point, you know, smaller wrestlers are the norm. Indie wrestlers are the norm. We are more into a high flying athletic technical wrestler than we are just a big giant. Who's a muscle head at this point, we've moved on from that. And at this point he is at that level that he knows he can be that. And I think everybody knows that, too. Would you disagree? No, I I, I do. And to, to kind of put a bow on CM Punk, because we've got to move on to Daniel Bryan, flat-out question, uh, give me your answer. Where, or when, rather, where and when do you think Punk returns? What's your official prediction on that? If if by chance he shows up in WWE, if, if, if that happens, I would say SummerSlam, right? Because that's the next big event. Mm-hmm. Do I think that's going to happen? Absolutely not. I think he's showing up in AEW. When? When? Mm. I don't know. I think whenever the hell he wants. It could be a random episode of Dynamite on Wednesday. They have the new show coming up on Fridays. I think it's called, um, not, it begins with a B. I, I forgot what it was, but uh, AEW has a new show starting on Fridays, I guess, to be a counter to SmackDown. It could be on the premiere episode of that. I believe it starts in August. Um I mean, their first big show is in NYC, which I actually might be buying tickets to. Um, it's in Queens. I don't like going to Queens, but I'm close enough. So um, mm-hmm. they are going to be playing Arthur Ashe Stadium. It's their first huge pay-per-view in a stadium, um, which I heard the ticket sales are growing great. But that leads us to the next subject, because the rumors are, is Daniel Bryan showing up there? So do you put Daniel Bryan and CM Punk on the same card? Do you have one come out and then the other one come out? Do you have both of them come out together? Because, like, seriously, if that happened, pff, huh. I don't know. I don't I, I don't know. I don't know what would happen. I think, like, you know, everybody wants to talk about Kim Kardashian. But no, that would break the Internet. That would break everything. If Daniel Bryan... And CM Punk walked out at an AEW event together or something happened when Brian walks out and then Punk's right behind him, vice versa, whatever. If they show up together, that is a Hall of Nash moment. That so I don't be, know. I, I can't even imagine that. But I, I don't think that – I don't think they would do that because whose entrance music would you use? I mean you, you, you got you to gotta pick also, one. Also, side note, when you're saying yeah. that, Punk, I love you. We need to get rid of the Living Color music. I know it's his signature – I don't even I know, know if that's he has the rights every, to it. Like, I mean, I don't know uh, he he does. I mean, WWE paid a lot of money. I know yeah. he's friends with the band, obviously, but it's just it does get. I love the song. It gets repetitive at a point. He needs to come out to something new or a throwback. I would love for him to come to the Kill Switch Engage music. Oh, but God. that would be. Insane. I mean, he had so many good songs on the indies. I, I put that tweet up yesterday. I don't think it's going to be his signature music because I think everybody's got. It, they want that. What? Who? Who is this? Like when AJ came out at the Rumble, yep. you know, he didn't have his signature music. It was new and everybody was like, who is this? And then as soon as they saw Phenomenal, the place absolutely explode, you know, so. And Vince is like, what? 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 Yeah, yeah, exactly. Vince, Vince didn't get it. Yeah. So uh, I don't think, you know, I hope. I, yeah. Whose entrance music do you use? I mean, yeah. you know, Brian's got Flight of the Valkyries. I don't think that. We're going to get into Daniel Bryan right now. I don't think I, – I heard – I read today he owns the rights to the name Daniel Bryan. I don't know if that's that's real, but I think if Daniel Bryan is showing up in AEW, he's coming back as Bryan Danielson as the American Dragon. So that's my personal opinion about mm-hmm. it. So I don't know. Who's entrance? No entrance music. How about that for once? Oh my How God. about just a run-in with a surprise? 
Just like somebody with a hood on, and then he reveals, yeah, yeah, somebody in a black hood. Um, I I, here's what I think. Well, Daniel Bryan, first of all, seems to be a step ahead, step or two ahead of where Punk is. What's your conclusion before we get to that about Punk? Uh, I think Punk. hmm. Everything I've read, it I I would land on more likely than not. It is AEW, given the bad blood that's with WWE, and there's there's still it's still there. I don't want to. You know, belabor that Johnny point. Johnny Ace but, is back. That's uh, yeah. huge bad blood. Like that was like that that whole storyline yeah, was Johnny real. <laughs> yeah. Like that was real. I don't yeah. think that Punk wants to deal with that guy, even if he has complete creative control nope. of his character. Him and Triple H. I don't think him and Vince. Vince is Vince's senile old man at this point. And Vince knows what's good for money, even at the end of the day when he does stupid things. But the animosity between Triple H and and Johnny Ace and CM Punk is real. And even though Punk has come out and said the money match is Triple H if he goes back to WWE because it's based in real life, you know, and that would be a great storyline to see play out. I don't think it's going to happen, though. I don't think so. I think it's some here. I'll, I'll say this, though. At some point in CM Punk's life, he will return to WWE, yes. even if it's just for a one time WrestleMania and he's gone um, or at and, the, and or, it, you know? that is more likely than I think right now with a multi match schedule, kind of like where Edge is scheduled for like three matches a year. I, I don't think that Punk would do that. I think it would be a one match and gone versus what he's going to do in AEW, which is likely come back for maybe wrestling once a month, twice a month, whatever it may be, or full time. That'd be insane. But I think Daniel Bryan right now, from all the reports I'm seeing, is a little bit ahead of CM Punk in terms of actually being signed. He's actually reportedly signed where CM Punk is just still in quote serious talks. So Daniel Bryan, i.e. Brian Danielson has reportedly signed with AEW. And the plan was to have him debut on the September 22nd episode. uh, I guess they're titling it grand slam. That's going to take place in Arthur Ashe stadium, which like you mentioned. So it does report appear. And even Dave Meltzer, whether you love him or hate or not, whatever um, he is, he has nailed it sometimes, and he has even talked about the fact that Daniel Bryan has has actually signed, but they don't have a debut date for him. So Daniel Bryan, I don't think it's a matter of if. I think it's just a matter of uh, when he's he's actually going to debut. And I think the the play Arthur Ashe is is in Queens, right? So uh, I think that's a good place for him. Yeah, it's um that was crazy because we were going back and forth on texting last night, and I was like, yeah, there was rumors that you know Brian Brian's uh contract has fully expired with the WWE. His last match was April 30th. Um, we haven't seen him since, obviously. Um, we know that he wanted to take a step back because you know he had a second kid. Um, but now it came out yesterday, right before all this broke, that you know he his his contract expired. He was no longer in talks with the WWE about renewing his contract, and that all of the merchandise listing and all the stuff that they do for WWE performance, he was nowhere on the list. So then you start thinking, you go, okay, well, is he just being a dad right now? You know, that's that's quite possible. Daniel Bryan has had injuries, but he's come back from injuries. But you know, like Punk, he is he is a wrestler in heart and blood and everything like that so we were going back and then 20 minutes before AEW airs which again that was the first time that I watched AEW like first night of weekly basis now I will be watching it I've caught it here and there but now it will be in my routine every week because I don't work Wednesday so you know right before it it says that he is basically signed and that he um, will be returning. And then it came out a little later in the night that it was going to be in New York City for their first big uh, stadium pay-per-view. And I mean, this is absolutely nuts. I said this when he I think it's, he's been on a year to year contract. I think I said this last year when his contract expired. That's why I kept bringing it up. I said if one goes somewhere, the other one's not far behind because they know what their star power is and they work well together. You know, they had classic matches in WWE. They had classic matches everywhere. The names kind of go, you know. One is with the other. So I saw that and I was just like, all right, it's game on. And if he shows up in New York City, that place is going to go absolutely bananas. Like it's it's going to be bananas um, with Punk and Toe or without. Daniel Bryan has proven that he is a beloved figure of the sport. He is a great heel. He is a great face. Um, and somehow WWE, even though they, they managed to like finally agree when he had his momentum going during the yes movement, they managed to screw the pooch on that. And when he came back, it never had the same feel. Um, and I think that was disappointing to him, but another factor where I think that, you know, these two guys 
will sign with AEW is all the contracts that AEW, AEW is willing to work with everybody, right? And WWE is still in this mentality that they can't, they need to buy everything. And you got New Japan and ROH and all these people showing up and these wrestlers going over here. I mean, John Moxley was the IGWP champ and, uh, and unfortunately lost last night. But like, that is also the appeal of this to somebody like Daniel Bryan or somebody like CM Punk. They can go to Japan and wrestle if they want, and it's not going to be a big deal. And they're going to be able to keep their names and they're going to be able to come back to their home federation and they're able to have a part time and they're going to be able to. It just makes so much more sense than WWE does because WWE will not get out of their archaic structure. And with the rumors of them being sold to a bigger company, they're going to just become more corporate than they already are. And AEW is fresh and it's new. And I, you know. I believe this Daniel Bryan rumor 100%. The punk thing, I'm still on the fence about. Again, like you said, I don't know. It, it seems like they're in serious talks. And this is punk being like, how do I get the most money for me right now? And I know that. And that's smart. That's a good businessman. He is a product. He is, a, you know, he is his own entity. And Daniel Bryan is, you know, somewhat of the same level. I don't think as much as punk just because punk – uh, I don't know. He's a brand, you know, Daniel Bryan doesn't come off as much as a brand, but he's still a huge person in wrestling. So this, this stuff is insane. I, I never thought that we would be here at this moment because it's just been so much hearsay and fantasy booking and conspiracy theories. But I think this Daniel Bryan thing is solid and I think it's locked in and we are going to see him very, very soon in AEW. Oh, Daniel Bryan to me is a lock. Uh, I would have put it like a 99% with everything I'm mm -hmm. seeing. And, and the sources, the wrestling websites that are mm -hmm. credible, not just the rumor mills, are actually putting out the fact that, yeah, he has signed it. it and here's the, the the plan date. Now, um, here's how I think it goes down as we kind of wrap things up here. My best guess is if they do indeed bring Punk and Bryan, who Bryan is a yes and Punk is a maybe, but likely what I think would happen is Daniel Bryan would come out. He would maybe cut a promo. Fans would lose their minds. A, a heel faction would come out. And they would surround the ring, and Daniel Bryan would say, yeah, I'm back, but I didn't say I was coming back alone. Mm -hmm. And maybe we have Punk come out, and I mean, people would probably, you know, you'd, ha you'd have half the audience uh, with stroke symptoms. I mean, so, <laughs> it, it, it would, it, like, I mean, just imagining that would be just a getting, I mean, thinking about it, again, I booked myself into, like, e excitement that is not even yes. close to real yet. But <laughs> that's how I envision something like that happening, if it's indeed AEW, not WWE. I mean, it measures up, too, because you got to remember one of the final storylines that Punk was in in WWE was he was aligned with Daniel Bryan. They kind of stuck them into a, a tag team together on, you know, Punk's way out. And Punk was a huge advocate for Daniel Bryan going over and being that main event guy in the WrestleMania that was coming up. Everybody wants to sit there and be like, oh, he was pissed. He was in the main event for the title. And he thought that the Undertaker match, honestly, the Undertaker match versus CM Punk should have been the main event of that pay-per-view because John yeah. Cena and Rock blew. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Hate to burst your bubble. I was there. It was terrible. It was finishing moves and the Rock gasping for air outside the ring the whole entire time. So, you know, Daniel Bryan being in that main event at the next WrestleMania, WrestleMania 30, CM Punk recognized that he was the guy and he was fighting for him. He just didn't know where he fit into all that stuff, you know? So... It, it it makes sense for the two of them to align because, like I said, they are the guys that really put the independent wrestlers on the map and open the doors for all these guys that we see now that we have grown to love who are exceptional athletes. Um, they broke the ceiling. They, 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 they changed the game. You know, Punk's the first guy that came over who didn't get renamed. He's the, the only guy who's had actual music and not crappy entrance music in the last 15, 20 years of WWE, unless you're old school. Like, it, it makes sense for the two of them to come together and, and form this alliance or whatever it might be. I don't know if it's going to be a faction. I don't know if they're going to try to take it over. I don't know if they're just going to be like, hey, we're here. We're not done yet. And, and let's go. I, I haven't fought any of y'all. And that that's another reason why AEW is so more appealing than WWE. They have their history with WWE. I'm not saying WWE doesn't have talent. They obviously do. And there are storylines there. Not so much for Daniel Bryan. But for CM Punk, absolutely. But both of them going to AEW, there is so many people they have never even stepped in the ring with. And there are old things that they can go back to. And it just 
it just makes more sense. And I'm super excited about it. And I, and I, and I think you're right. I think Daniel Bryan showing up and getting attacked and CM Punk coming out for the save happens, or maybe, you know, Daniel Bryan keeps getting attacked on a weekly basis. And then somebody comes out of the crowd and it's punk, or maybe he comes out in a mask. You know how punk works. He does weird things that don't make sense when you see it at first, but in the end, it all makes sense. He's one of those guys, or maybe they just walk out together. I don't know. But what I do know is this is the most solid and concrete and likely situation that it has been talked about in the last seven years and last three years when Daniel Bryan's like status has been questionable within the WWE. And I think it's just a matter of time also. And I think New York city is, you know, a wrestling city. It's one of the main towns that you do debuts or, or shows up or surprises at. And I think as your first pay-per-view in a stadium size and trying to compete with WWE, what a bigger way to do it than have the two biggest names in wrestling still one who hasn't wrestled in seven years. And just to be like, they are anti, WWE. They are the epitome of the anti WWE. And you know, when you look at the case again for AEW, and this this is uh, my my final thought here. I mean, we could talk about this for for ever. hours. Just, I mean, really, because it's just so intriguing and in how they could do it in so many different scenarios. But as far as what I think about when I'm thinking, trying to get in CM Punk's shoes, which is always a fun adventure, <laughs> um, is when I look at WWE, yes, that is, quote, my home. Yes, I made a, a big career there, my pipe bomb promo. And, and there are some good memories for Punk there. I mean, we look we look at it as if WWE was this evil organization to Punk, and they didn't treat him right for several years, but he did have a hell of a run that made him into the star he is today. So there is that. But when you – that aside – you, you have to look at, number one, the money with Tony Khan. Tony Khan has deep pockets, so I don't think really money would be necessarily the issue. And also, not um, to cut you off, he was the first – Punk was the first guy that Khan wanted to sign when they started this thing. Yep. And it didn't happen. You know, Punk says they had got a text, you know, how he is, but – yeah. We still know that for a fact. Yep, and it, it, they said it wasn't really a serious negotiation, and Punk was was kind of off put by it. I guess it seemed like he was kind of like, "Hey, if you're serious, like, why are we texting about this, right?" Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I get that a star of Punk's caliber probably deserves to be more than just texted. It, you know, should be at least a phone call in person, fly him out, whatever. But um, back to my point, I think that CM Punk, or I'm sorry, Tony Khan has deep pockets. The money's there. You have, uh, of, of course, the the creative flexibility that you don't have in WWE. That everything's micromanaged. We're never going to allow a star to get bigger than WWE. WWE, the brand is bigger than any wrestler. And with AEW, it's kind of the opposite philosophy, where the, the creative is is handed over to the talent to some degree, and they have much more say in what they do and say on camera, which is a big deal to talent. I think it helps with morale. It also erases the concerns that he has with uh, WWE that's still like that. So there's that. And then he has a bunch of friends there with with, uh, with Samoa Joe, Daniel Bryan, uh, Jim Ross. I mean, he has a big show. He has Jericho. I mean, the list goes on. He has has a whole lot of allies there as well. So you take those three factors. I think it's if you're going to pick, it's got to be AEW. Yeah, I mean, I I I don't see I if it, if he comes back and, and like I said, I always I knew I just didn't know when, but the, you know the clock is ticking. He's he's not a young chicken anymore. But you know at the same time, man's never put a drug or alcohol into his body. He's probably in better shape than I am. You know, like being older oh, than God. me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, me like too. I mean, me he, he's he's <laughs> yeah. a physical. You know, he he's a runner. He has you know he is somebody who takes care of himself way better than most of the population does. So you don't know what level he is on. He was able to walk into UFC and have a fight. Did he get his ass kicked? Yes, he did. But did, was he able to do it? Yeah. Would you be able to do that, Matt? Uh, I, I, you know. I, I love when people try to downplay, oh, he got his ass kicked. I would challenge anybody, anybody, yes. to, to for number one, not, not just step in the ring and even come close to succeeding. That's not the point because you probably get your ass kicked. It's the training and the dedication yeah. to train that people don't realize how much of a sacrifice there is. So Yeah, so, I mean, so, you know, it just doesn't – he – Going to AEW fills all the boxes. And like you said, I think at one point he will go back to WWE. But this is almost like an AJ Styles and like a Drew McIntyre, you know, thing. Like going somewhere else and like making your mark, even though Punk doesn't need to do that. And then being like, okay, you guys want me back? Okay, well now this is, I I am Triple H. Like, you know, like I, like you guys can't say crap to me. And, you know, will it happen? I don't know. I I think that he has unfinished business with John Cena. I was watching that feud last night. It's, you know, and John's going to be retired sooner than later. I would love to see that feud reignited. Will it happen? I don't know. But 
uh, again, I, we're speculating, we're, we're, you know, but we're excited. And I think that this is the closest that we are to having Punk back in wrestling. And everybody should just be happy because it's a win for everybody, everyone. It doesn't matter if he shows up in WWE. It doesn't matter if he shows up in AEW. Because if he shows up in AEW, maybe WWE will finally get their crap together. Everybody seems to forget that. They want to bitch about WWE and then be like, oh, no, you know, AEW will never take WWE out. But, like, the product is not that great. So, like, wouldn't you want somebody to make them, like, you know, piss their pants a little bit? I want Vince to piss his pants a little bit. I want him out, you know. But two guys like Daniel Bryan and Punk, despite whatever the WWE thinks or the corporate heads or whatever they think, they have the power to move that needle and and flip the industry on its head right now. And I think this is the last thing I'll say. I, I keep saying that, but it's just so hard <laughs> um, because I, I, I have to, uh, unfortunately guys, I'm actually at work right now. My big boy job. Uh, this is benefits of working from home. Uh, but that said, I, I will say that this is probably, if he signs with AEW, this is easily the biggest, uh, I think concern or uh, knock that WWE has had to worry about since the Monday Night Wars. I mean, because there's been TNA, there's been other smaller Mm -hmm. uh, organizations. And yes, when AEW came about, they were like, eh, well, Triple H infamously called it the Pissant Company. Um, We we got uh, big signings, Jericho, Jim Ross, Big Show, uh, uh, you know, Kenny Omega. Uh, and, and MJF, who I absolutely love MJF, yes. but um, you know, outside of that, they probably still look at it and go, eh, well, yeah, they're doing all right. They got some WWE leftovers. This is different. This, I think, would be the first time WWE may go, whoa, since the Monday Night Wars. I mean, yeah. I mean, think about it. Even if like you're looking at it at a storyline basis, like this was Punk's purpose was to take down a company like wwe like even in character like he was anti-establishment the whole entire time that is who he is he is a straight edge he is that is what he is he is an anarchist this is the biggest way that he could do it is like completely going to the other organization that does have the money that can afford him and be like oh you guys didn't think i could do this well guess what i'm doing this now and it would be that middle finger it would be that middle finger to triple h it would be that middle finger to vince for you know getting papers sent to him on his wedding day it it it, it's something they do need to be concerned about and i just don't think that they think it's real you know like they're gonna be like ah you know whatever they're not taking him seriously because they're wwe but you know you have a guy like punk who that is his that is his vengeance that's his vendetta that is his blood and that is who he is as a person is he wants to change the world and he wants to take down the big guys because he's always been the small guy him going to AEW is like simple science. It's simple math. Like there, there's no way. And just as an end note for me, think about Jim Ross losing his crap when CM Punk comes out. Daniel Bryan, I'm sure too. But when Punk's comes out, that is why Jr. is Jr. He's gonna sell that guy like Stone Cold. I don't care if he's old and he slips up a little bit. That care. is what yeah. I want to hear. I want to hear Jr. losing his mind when CM Punk shows up because he's always been a CM Punk advocate. Yeah, no, Jim Ross would uh, he would take a trip back in time to 1999 and uh, mm-hmm. he would he would become that Jim Ross for for that moment. Yeah, it would be awesome to hear. And Shivani as a yeah. side man would be perfect. I wouldn't want anybody else. I wouldn't want. You know, Cole or no, King no. next no, no, to him. No, no. Corey Graves, maybe. But like any of them, <laughs> any guy that yeah. is in WWE right now on 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 commentary, I wouldn't want that. Even if Jim Ross was there, I want Jim Ross and Tony Schiavone. I always liked Tony Schiavone. I never had a problem with him, even in WCW days. Is the perfect side guy to have there, right there, when because Schiavone's never reacted to Punk. Think about that. You know, so I that's the moment I want. I don't care. I mean, I care about his music. I don't care what the situation is. But I was salivating at the thought of Jr. last night if Punk shows up. Yeah. And he won't be under another name. He will be CM Punk. So he can say whatever he wants. And, you know, the first promo, no matter why he is there, is going to be taking shots and shooting at WWE. And you know it. Oh, it's going to be awesome. It's, it's going to be so good. With the muzzle I off. cannot yeah. wait. Yeah. I cannot wait. 
Okay. All right. Now that all of us have become uh, just kind of a foregone conclusion now in our minds that it's going to happen, <laughs> and we've built you guys up to something that may not happen, uh, at least you can hang your hat on Daniel Bryan, which is all but 100% confirmed. It's it's about a, a hair away from being 100%. And I'm probably, so. probably going to buy tickets to that. I know you might be busy with a baby, uh, but we yeah. might need to make a trip to Queens, Matt. Man, <laughs> that, that is so ten- – oh, I will say this. If – and because I could make kind of a day trip out of it if I try to sell it to my wife, um, if it is in, well, if Daniel Bryan is confirmed, which it looks like he is, and CM Punk is heavily rumored, and there's very, very credible sources, things point in that direction, then maybe I'll, I'll see if I can sell it because I might be able to for something like that. That would be absolutely insane. So, yeah. um, all right. Well, Mary, it's been awesome. Uh, I hope that uh, you are as excited as I am. I'm more excited now than I was, and I'm sure that all of our listeners are like, oh, I can't wait. And then, you know, nothing happens, right? Punk goes back to, like, doing, you know, backstage or something, you know. So, um, all right. Well, Mary, thank you so much. Is there anything that you'd like to share social media-wise? Uh, you guys can follow me at Mayor underscore Bear, B-A-R-E, where I spew my conspiracy theories, and I've been just throwing out pink, punk love all all last 24 hours for people to come back at me, the ones who hate them, but, you know, it doesn't matter to me. <laughs> or you can follow me on Instagram at Poppins311, and thank you for having me on yeah. as your one source for CM Punk news and local conspiracy <laughs> theorists. <laughs> that is exactly – no, that, that's going to be your title. Like, if there was such a thing I could uh, create a title, yeah, that, that would be it. And I will say that, guys, if you want to get her attention, and you want to feel like you're really smart and, and you go after Mary on, on Twitter, just make sure you tell her that uh, if CM Punk goes AEW, WWE is shutting down. So that is the, the, <laughs> the best way to do a mic drop. I, I also got, not real quick, I also got if CM Punk goes to AEW, he will bring in more ratings than Roman Reigns. I was like, thank you. Thank you for telling me that. I needed you to tell me that. Wow. I was completely unaware of that. Yes, yes, that you're is, right. Have I a nice mean, day. Yeah. Like, didn't even think of that. That is just genius. Wow. All right. Well, uh, thanks so much, Mary. We'll be in touch. All right. Talk to you All soon. Right. Bye. Bye.